Shalom, damn it! This is Rabbi Sal Solomon with a rabbinical reflection for the week of August 21st, 2011. It's 12 p.m. Do you know where your money is? First it's up, then it's down, then it's up, then it's down. If you have your money in the stock market, your portfolio is bouncing up and down faster than a hooker on an epileptic. I go away for a few weeks, take a little time off. What do I miss? Oh, nothing. Just America going bankrupt? How does that work, anyway? If we're supposed to pay $3 billion to Brazil, and we don't have it, what do they do? What can they do? Send some guy to the White House? Hola, my name's Jorge. I'm supposed to break the president's legs. But if you give me $1 billion now, I can just break his toes. I mean, what does going bankrupt really mean? China won't loan us any more money, Why are we borrowing from them in the first place? I don't even like Chinese money. You spend a hundred yen, an hour later you feel like shopping again. But seriously, if the United States crashes to the floor, every other country crashes to the sub-basement. So, maybe they can forgive a loan or two. Give us another year to pay off. Let us get to that middle period between our current recession and our next corporate fraud. You gotta love the arrogance of Wall Street. Last month, all the politicians get together, frantically making a deal to raise the debt ceiling. They're borrowing from Peter to pay Paul. Or, in my lingo, borrowing from Fievel to pay Moish. Just so we're spared embarrassment, shame, and having to raise goats and churn our own butter. America stays solvent, and what happens? Two days later, the stock market plummets a thousand points. We go from a triple A credit rating to double A. What does that mean? What, we have to get our parents to co-sign a loan? Fine, dig up George and Martha Washington. Will that be enough? All the topsy-turvy turbulence of the Dow Jones has nothing to do with jobs or debt or wages or Social Security. It's all about rich people playing a game with money that doesn't exist. That's all Wall Street is. Monopoly played by frat boy pricks. Which is why, even when 90% of us are suffering, 10% are making money by the bucket and paying taxes by the thimble. As for the double dip, remember what I said half a year ago about gas prices? Go look it up. I'll wait. But I'll also refresh your memory. I said that the country would be fine and recover from the George Bush years unless gas prices went up. If they hit $4, we're stooped. So, what happened weeks ago? Gas prices zipped past three fifty. People shut their wallets. Businesses got scared. Supermarkets jacked their prices. Voila, economic downturn. The only good news? Now that the market's in a lull, Oil prices are taking a hit. Sure enough, people will start to spend again, so long as they're not spending it all on the brown crap the Arabians pump out of the ground. You want houses to sell again? Make it so it doesn't cost 500 bucks a month to heat them in the winter. You want folks to take a vacation? Make it so airlines don't have to charge 50 bucks for luggage to offset gasoline they're just going to dump over the Atlantic Ocean anyway. You want Americans to have jobs? Make it so you're not paying people a measly minimum wage to fry McNuggets and scrape canola from a fryer. Come to think of it, we don't have to frack in Pennsylvania to strike oil. Just hit the kitchen of a Denny's. Maybe the answer is, instead of borrowing money... We should just borrow oil. Borrow it, use it, refine the waste product back into petroleum, and then return it to OPEC with a few quarts of ethanol for interest. Of course, it still doesn't pay the Arab world back for 9-11, but like with everything else nowadays, we'll write them an IOU. This has been a rabbinical reflection from Rabbi Sal Solomon, Temple Sons of Bitches. Thank you.